Hello, hello, everybody. Uh, howdy. And welcome back to Nick's Route. <laughs> to Nick's Route. Well, we watched half of the Mean Girls musical today. <sighs> no, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't happen. You sure? Yeah. Yesterday, then. Excuse me. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> and think about what fucking time it was. Because Mr. Asshole Semantic over here has to be fucking by the book for no reason. It's the next day. Who cares? <laughs> Nobody cares. Yeah? Nobody cares. Man, what, I watched, what, 20 minutes of it? Yeah. You, you came in not very long long after we had started it. Damn. That movie was pretty bad. Yeah. I wasn't I wasn't enjoying it too much. And like it really came down to like the editing mm-hmm. and shot direction. Yeah. It just like it makes the movie feel so bland. It does. It's just not Because uh... nothing else about it is like bad. No. All the actors are doing their thing. Yeah. They're singing. They're doing. I, their I felt the songs were just lackluster overall. Sure, but I wouldn't say they're bad. No, no, no. I would say it's everything else. Yeah, so it's... they felt like a modern. They felt like a modern song in a musical. Yeah. Um, but it was it was a very flat movie. Very nothing really interesting to look at. Mm-hmm. Especially, which is a detriment, especially during your musical numbers. Your like, musical numbers should be showstoppers. I should be like draw on the floor. Mm-hmm getting really into it should be interested at least come on and uh wasn't that so no i mean i I might finish it just for the sake of finishing it but i don't feel very compelled to do so (laughs) i mean just in general and like you know it's just just boring (laughs) it's a boring movie there could be good songs in it that i missed though the best song is honestly the one that wasn't even in the movie was it in the credits? Yes. Oh. Unfortunate. That's a shame. Well, we skip straight to the credits. Mm, let's see. We'll see. That's how you watch a movie. You yeah, skip, skip the movie, right to the go credits. straight to the credits. Period. If their song's bad, bleh. Right? Oh, um, I think Wish is going to be on Disney Plus soon. No. I know you want me to watch it. Yeah, I want I you to watch it. No. No. Would you watch it with Megan? She hasn't no. seen it before. I don't care. <laughs> That movie is so... Why do you exist? Why do you exist? That's a movie that I'm like, okay, so it's not like an abysmal movie. Mm -hmm. But it's so embarrassing that that's the 100 year anniversary movie. Yeah. Like, I think that's it. If this was like just any other movie, it'd be like, eh, whatever. Right. But like the fact that it's like... This should have been a movie you had been prepping for like the last decade. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Something grandiose. It was definitely like... Would you say it felt like a last minute? Yeah. Production? Every, yeah, in every way. Yeah. In it just feels way. really bad to think it's like how many other animation studios can say they've lasted a century? Yeah. None. <laughs> like, it, it, this should not be a eh movie. This yeah. should be a like, this is the movie of this decade. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. or at least feel like you're pushing for that. Yeah. Yeah. This movie did not feel that way. It was. That's a, it why was, I was really disappointed. It was just. It was run of the mill, and it needed to be something more. Yeah. But yeah, that's coming to Disney Plus soon. So just letting you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm letting you know because you're here. Sure. <laughs> Granted, the first twenty minutes aren't bad. Yeah, that's the strongest part of the movie. First twenty minutes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Unfortunate. Mm. Yeah, that's a lot of Disney movies. Because I felt the same way about Moana. Mm. Where I'm like, those first 15 minutes, I kind of liked it. Yeah. And then as soon as she gets on that boat, I sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I sleep. <laughs> I did not care about the entire rest of that movie. Yeah. That's fair. <laughs> no. I don't I, care. And the I Want song is like just it's the best fine. song in that movie. Yeah. It's, it it's unfortunate. Is. Yeah. I mean, one your i want song should be the mm. best song in your disney movie yeah. i'm just saying let me see that needs to be like an auto include in the disney i want playlist mm-hmm. uh like they should be the best one and this it's fine yeah i hated all the rest of the songs in moana though that's right yeah what a terrible composer 
<laughs> no, I, I, I do not. I do not feel like talking about Lin Manuel Miranda right now. Let's move on. Has he ever opinions about um, Randy Newman as well? Has Has Lin Manuel ever composed a good song? Let me rephrase that: a great song. A great, a great song. song. I was gonna say it, but I... <laughs> hmm. everyone else says that it's his best. Which one? Bruno. <laughs> Ugh. Uh. Oh, we don't talk about Bruno. That that no. song, like it ran away on the, like the fucking Billboard charts when Encanto came out. Yeah. For no reason. I'm like, why do people like this? Song? It, it had no business doing that. Like, I guess I didn't think it was bad, but I, like that part of the movie came and went. Um, Mirabelle's "I Want" song, I I like it. It was very liked well it. put together a lot. overall. No, like, yeah, that is a good song. It's probably the best one in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's still just so riddled with Lin Manuel lorisms. Oh, it just it just it's like people like people praise his like flow i guess and just the way he is able to write lines yeah no they felt so blocky and unwieldy in encanto like all the way that i never touch my balls if i can prove that i never touch my balls do you promise not to tell another soul what you saw it's from hamilton <laughs> i'm never gonna watch hamilton <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You can't pay me to watch Sorry. Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> like, I get why it got as popular, and I get why it made Lynn and Wells, you know, it inflated his name like it did. Yeah. Um. But, like, and, I, you know, I'm not going to sit here and lie and say that I didn't have the soundtrack on repeat for, like, a month when uh-huh. I first when I first started listening to it. Wow, it's great. And then, like, I got exhausted from it, obviously. And then I started experiencing some other Lin Manuel stuff, and I'm like, "Wait a minute, it's all the fucking same." <laughs> Wait a minute, that card. <laughs> Wait a minute, that card. No range. It's the same. <laughs> it's the same. It's like you know, like like if you look at fucking Mr. Andrew Lloyd Webber, right? Yeah. <laughs> like okay, no, there is that. Sure, I get it. But you get like you know, you get your phantoms. Yeah. I wouldn't say that phantom sounds anything like cats. Yeah, expansive you know is mean? a listenable soundtrack. It is. <laughs> you know, like I mean, but if you look, if you, but if you listen to Hamilton, and then you go and listen to fucking In the Heights, yeah, or if you listen to Moana and then you go listen to Encanto, it's just like wow, all the same bullshit. Yeah, I think Moana is probably the most palatable, like disney work he's done yeah but that's because he was just kind of like a little more low-key yeah yeah no i get it i get it i'm usually like fine if a composer doesn't have a lot of range if their range is still like fun to listen to Mm -hmm. because i always think about like uh you know here here's josh mentioning people that no one's ever fucking heard of right Mm. we have like famed composer yuki hayashi okay everyone knows yuki hayashi yeah you all know Uh, 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 like his his work is very recognizable you hear like two measures of a song and And you know that it's yuki uh, hayashi (laughs) the way that he swells his strings in uh uh brass sections Mm -hmm. he's like there he is. That's a Hayashi song. He's doing it. <laughs> He's like most famous for one song because it's literally all anime fans will remember. And that's mm. a You Say Run from Boku no Hero Academia, uh, uh, which I think is his most boring song he's ever composed. But hey, that's just me. Well, I mean, he was like, I'm going to make money off of this. I could literally shit on a piece of paper and turn it's it facts. in. It's facts. It's facts. And make I, a hundred thousand million dollars. I adore dollars. his soundtrack. To Gundam Build Fighters. Build Fighters. <laughs> that, that's him. Okay. <laughs> it's pretty good. He also did Pokemon 2019. He did oh, sick. That series, and that was a beautiful soundtrack. Pokemon fans hated it. Uh, well, because that, it, that cause it's Pokemon fans, and they wouldn't that, know quality if it, it slapped them in the face. Like, actually. <laughs> I, I hate how the only reason why people dislike his soundtrack is it, they're not using the game music. Hey, shut up. And he's like... Because it stays... 
it belongs in the video game how about yeah it's like the mm-hmm. anime is allowed to have its own soundtrack like mm-hmm. fuck off <laughs> and it's a better soundtrack <laughs> but you know stop like get your nostalgia head out of your ass yeah like you know i'll fucking i'll fucking turn up to little root town okay mm-hmm. i will any day of the fucking week but like mm-hmm. you gotta you gotta understand what those pieces are yeah like you gotta understand what what pokemon is and, what they're doing. and leave it there yeah right yeah unless you're um that one town i think it's from black and white mm-hmm that everyone fucking loves because they put that dancing uh toothless to it <laughs> oh, God. oh dear oh dear do you remember what we were doing in nick's route i have it's no been like, idea it's been like eight months it literally has i have no idea <laughs> i think it's been nine months um what happened last let me think we because how long ago did we escape from the cavern that was a while ago. That was a long while ago, yeah. wasn't it? Are we planning to go back? You know what? Well, I think we'll just go. I think we're just going to... Just going to read and see where yeah, it takes yeah. us? Well, yeah, I, I legitimately have no clue. It, that's the fun part. Ben looks at us with the forced kind of look that only comes from a man who doesn't really know how to restrain himself. This seems to be, <clears throat> seems to be the way of things when you happen to show up. But I've only ever been, what, get? Genial. Genial. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't even know what I was, <laughs> probably genial. Probably genial. Genial. <laughs> you tried to hurt me. Twice. <laughs> Bullshit. Angry. He's not denying it in a way that sounds convincing, but he blu- blusters? Blusters. Blusters on. Took you by the hand and gave you a newcomer's uh, welcome and everything. Then you threw it in my face and tried to make me look like a fool. All the while you give thanks to those lazy union son of a bitches. He tisks and shakes his head. Grown man still blabbering like a baby. It's a sorry sight, really. There are people watching us through the windows now. I'm kind of glad for that. There's no telling what this man would do if he ever caught me alone. If nobody were here, I'd be looking for a weapon bulging from his shoe or pocket. (laughs) Nick loves his hat. Oh, yeah, his hat got His hat got stole. Yeah, it went That's missing. That's right. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's all coming back. It's not. Yeah, no, but- <laughs> not at all. That, that little detail, sure. Now that they told us, I remember. I remember exactly, right? <laughs> Funny how that works. That tell me things, game. And I'll remember once you tell me. Yes. Yeah. And I can say I remembered the, the whole, whole time. time. So, oh, I knew that. I obviously knew that's what we were doing. It was locked deep in my cranium. <laughs> in your mind palace, yes. sealed away. <laughs> I feel so mad I could spit in his mouth. You took it. Oh, my God. He bares his teeth. Wrong! <laughs> then he spits into a lazy... Slips? Slips into a lazy smirk. Um, but I might have a hunch you did. Okay. Who then? Somebody who has access to his keys all night. He nods. Like that tiger with that slanty eyes. Jesus. <laughs> like I'd believe that bullshit. Sheet eating prick. Ain't the most likely suspect. You? He starts laughing. You really think I got time to waste on something like that? Yes. I do. I'm wounded. And now why'd you say a thing like that? Because I hate you. (laughs) Too stubborn to think there could be somebody in your group of commie buttfuckers who valued the real world over lies and laziness. If you knew, knew anything about the real world, you'd know I could. No, I care about my friends. <laughs> he fights for his friends. <laughs> his fr- my friends are my power. <laughs> Hate <he> everything. 
I don't care about any of this convoluted horseshit. You're the one who's here, after all. Seems pretty clear to me that you know who the... where the damn hat is. Course I do, you bum! I'm just the messenger. Should be thanking me, really. Where is it? Nick lumbers to his feet and advances on the dog. It's a lot quicker than you'd think from somebody his size. I see the red in his eyes. Tell me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's the boss who's holding it, not me. Nick stops as worry crosses his face. The boss? James? He tilts his head and flashes me the white of his eyes. No, not fucking James. Briggs, the real boss. Oh. Hmm. He's the top in the relationship. Yeah, obviously. We all knew. We, we all knew. knew. Yeah. We done been known this. Yeah, goddamn slow. Oh, right. I hardly ever see his face, and that keeps slipping my mind. Where is he? At his office. This late? Whole operations working overtime, thanks to some people. Nick doesn't address the comment. He just starts uh, walking down the gravel road toward the direction of the mine. Ben walks past me, cupping his paw at his muzzle, and shouts, You're welcome for the directions, big guy! Punch him. No! And Nick's still ignoring him. He bumps shoulders with me aggressively as he walks in the direction that he came. Watch where you're standing! I try to shove him back when he's already out of my reach. I don't have time for you tonight. He walks. T his walk turns into a jog as the gap between us grows and he disappears into the alley shadows of a nearby cabin. Now I think I should go after Nick, even though he doesn't seem to want me to. No, uh, that is one way to sow uh, dissent, deceit, dissent, dissent. Descent. As in distrust. Okay. Deceit is another word. Yeah. Sure. I jump when I hear the tiger's voice, who shows himself emerging from the alley around the corner. Okay. I was worried you were somebody else. A practical thing to worry about. You grow more observant. <laughs> What's the real reason Ben was here? The bosses have a skeleton key. They have looked through our belongings during the daylight before. Men have been fired for their possessions. Is it a good idea to keep the map of the mind in your locker then? I have a way to know if they find it. They have not. I don't have time to ask him how he's safeguarding his drawings, but I haven't caught him in a lie yet. Yet, this is all reasonably uh, believable to me. I look away, watching Nick slowly disappear down the long and open road. No hat isn't worth all this trouble. He knows tonight is the last opportunity we will have to get the gold. You should watch over him. I do not think he will go without the hat. Then I'll make sure he gets it back. The tiger smiles. And how? Hopefully, he'll just give the damn thing back. I lower my voice. But I'll sweep, I'll swipe it if I have to. <laughs> Not like it belongs to him, anyhow. Good. That is the only action men like them understand. By their rules, they have only themselves to blame. <laughs> what are you going to do? I am going to prepare for tonight. In case we run into something... We should not run into. You really think you can handle what's down there? I have a distraction, at least. But I do not think we should need it if we get what we need and leave. The distraction is Sam. Yeah. <laughs> run around and bang some pots and pans together, Sam. That's you. You're just gonna push Sam in the front. Go. Off. Be free. Go. Shoot. <laughs> yeah. Whoosh. 
I don't know if I really believe what he says, but it's not like we're going to believe that gold down there. If we want to get out of town and stay our stay on our feet for a while, we have to have have this money. He gives me a rough pat on the shoulder. Uh, the touch surprises me coming from him. It might have surprised him, too, by the looks on his face, but he doesn't give either of us the chance to dwell on it, turning away and disappearing into the shack. I start to walk the same gravel road that Nikolai walked in the direction of the mine. As I leave the shack behind me, there's nothing on either side of me but a near-endless expanse of rock and dirt. Of rock? Of rock? Desert. Mm-hmm. But I can't shake the feeling that somebody's eyes are on my back. Somebody might assume I'm here to take m to make money off of their struggle. Hopefully not. Uh, that would certainly make me mad if it were me. Mad enough to kill, maybe. Ooh. It's uh not a it's it's not so safe to be walking out all uh, about by myself. But I won't be alone once Nick is back. I can see the light of the office on the hills in the distance. I can't. As I get closer, the crickets stop chirping. That feeling like I'm being followed sneaks up on me again. But I can see very clearly all around me, and there's nobody here. So all I can do is keep walking forward until my feet hit the wood of the office desk. Hit the... Hit the... The immediate presence of another person at this hour makes it just a little less daunting. It's the secretary. She's at her typewriter, typing away until she sees me. Can I help you? I need to know where my friend went. His name's Mr. Kroll. He's a big badger, even bigger than me. He's in the office with Mr. Briggs. I need to know what they're saying. She looks away from me and continues typing. That's a closed conversation. <laughs> a panic starts to overtake. You're with uh, uh, Dimitri, right? <laughs> yes? Oh, Something wrong. Back at it. Nothing wrong at all. Nothing, okay. nothing at all. Okay, good. Uh, she gives me a sharp look. So it's true then. I know him. I'm with him. I really need to know what they're saying. For the first time, she takes her hands away from the keyboard. I can do what you ask. If you deliver a document for me tonight. To where? To the library at Town Hall. I don't know if she was going to say that. So that we can see Porter again. Mm hmm We like Porter. He's okay. Yeah, he's all right. I like his brother more. I know you do. He's cuter. <laughs> there is a man there who always stays late. I know him. She pauses. Then you should know how, should uh, have some idea of how important the delivery will be. She points to the mail slot at the door. If you use a pen, then there's enough of a gap in to, to see without them hearing. I walk up to her desk and quickly snatch uh, the pen from the cup. Why are you helping me? Because you said you were. Yeah, you literally made a deal. <laughs> I'm not. I just think no unsustainable industry has an inherent right to exist. Let's share a common goal. She gestures to the door. Nice. <laughs> okay. I like that. <laughs> sure. Uh, I crouch and use the pen to open the mail flap. I hear them ba better than I can see them, but I can sp find the right angle to see both of men. Briggs sits with Nick's cap in his paw. He glares at it a bit before setting it on the table. Was I placing Briggs or were you placing Briggs? I think... I think you might have been voicing Briggs. Okay. Nicholas King is your name, yes. Nick's ears twitch and he scratches the back of his head, shuffling a bit in his chair. Yes, sir. I see. Briggs puffs on his cigar and sits down, like he's thinking carefully on what to say next. The men, though, they seem to call you Nikolai Krull. 
Want to explain why they... Why that might be the case to me? Yes, of course. Nicholas King is a direct translation of my birth, birth name from Lachia. They mean the same thing. Uh, the collie's neck stiffens and he exhales through his nose. Well, but they don't. Do they? Nick shuffles again. I do not know what you mean. It's pretty simple. If they meant exactly the same thing, then they'd be the same thing. You know Nikolai sounds as much of a Rus name as it is a Lock Lockean. But you're a member of the USC now, aren't you? Yes, of course. And you wouldn't want a case open presenting unpatriotic pro proclivities in the courts. Now would you? No, sir. Nicholas King sounds like a hard-working USC citizen. But Nick Krull? Why, a conspirator... Is that what that says? Yep. A conspirator uh, pops into my head before I can think of what the actual accusation might be. He squint... His eyes uh, squint as he leans forward. Do you get what I mean? Nick puts his paws in one of his pockets, clenching it into a fist. Yes, I get what you mean. Briggs sits, da sits back, uh, bouncing against the back of his chair, paws folded up. Then, Nicholas King, it is. He picks up his hat again. <laughs> this hat wasn't made in this country, was it? Nick stares. What do you say? Because it's pretty apparent that the gas canister runs two inches thicker than our standard hats. It's no burden to transfer gas from the cans that the company supplies to this one. I didn't ask if it was a burden. Larger cans increase the risk of a, a greater blast if you encounter pockets of gas. The metric of the gas canister has never been an issue before. He clasps his hands and leans towards Nick again. Perhaps, but as new uh, canisters arise, so do new conditions. Who brought you my hat? I can hear the clicking of the clock on the wall. It doesn't matter who brought it. <clears throat> who brought the hat? It kind of does, but only a little bit. Only a little bit. Nick stands. But it does. Somebody took this for my private locker. I like how angry he looks. He is quite angry. His his eyebrows are so strong. Yeah. I like him a lot. Mm -hmm. Take a seat, Mr. King. He resists for a while, but the collie stares back. Slowly, Nick slumps back into this office chair. I'm happy to remind you that those lockers and those houses are completely and irrefutably company property. If you're looking for the hand that confiscated your cap, just save yourself the trouble and consider it mine. But the hat is my property, sir. It is one of the very few things on this planet that is mine and mine alone. And I would like to have it back. Briggs takes a few puffs of his cigar and he head bobbing as if considering. Go ahead and take it. Nick smiles. But if you choose to wear this hat on duty anywhere inside of my mines, then you can't work under SC... Wait, CSCG employment going forward. Not that you're working much anyway, considering the strikes you and your lot are posing. The reason we strike is your inflexibility. This cap has saved my life more times than I can count. If you banish my cap from your workplace, then you are sentencing me to starvation or deadly or a deadly accident. The better we are treated, the more we'll want to help you succeed. The strike, the anger, the instability. It can all go away. We just need to have the money to feed our families 
and the dignity to live our lives beyond just work. Briggs sighs. He pinches the bridge of his nose and then rubs the bags under his eyes. I have a much better way of dealing with this. Operations immediate problems. For an immigrant... Wait, migrant? Yeah. For a migrant. Uh, you're an intelligent man, Mr. King. You have impressive technical... <clears throat> uh, school credentials and years of experience without making many mistakes or... Uh, sustaining major injuries. But unfortunately, you, a great deal of the softer sex, and a few remaining pockets of Europa, still seem to live in the naivete of a utopian dream. Do you know, do you want to know the secret? Most of the men who lead industry in this country will never tell their subordinates. Tell me. You see, I value fairness in its most brutal simplicity by letting men know the truth. And the truth is that this industry age is a very simple one. Your life or your death at the scale in which we work isn't just a competition between you and another fellow. It's between you or... <clears throat> it's between you or 100 other fellows. By today's standards, it's prosper. To, to prosper with a family of five, it, it, uh, it is uh, demanded that we split the throats of. Oh, slit the throats of 500 others. He smiles. Wait, gently? Wait, gen I think it's supposed to be gent. Or unless gentili is a word. Gentili? It could be a word. I'm gentili. curious about that. Gentili. Sounds like a tea. There's genteel. Genteel. Polite, refined, or respectable, often in an affected or ostentatious way. Gotta hear it. Genteel. So I guess <laughs> genteely. Genteely, of so, course. So respectfully. Politely. So we do this as politely as we know how. As neatly and cleanly as our... Just say it. <laughs> Conscience allows. <laughs> I don't bother reducting my own mother in this matter, because she's quite happy to live as she does, <clears throat> as she does, thinking in her own golden rule way. And of course, unbeknownst to her, I have already taken care of her one hundred alternatives. So, with that truth laid at my feet every day. Do you think I have the space in my head to give a damn about the life or death of a singular man based on his eccentric proclivities? To be frank, your odds of survival aren't good to begin with. But if push comes to shove, you should try to be one of the ones, not one of the hundred. And if hearing that makes you want to slit my throat, then I've already done you a favor. Get a new cap, and do better, sir. Or else go home and starve. Yeah, it's okay, the game's thinking. There it we is. go. Nikolai stands, but says nothing. Then he takes his hat and puts it on, and starts walking towards the door. Walking towards me. Oh, oh. I'm still trying to process the shock of what I've just heard, but my instincts are screaming for me to get to get up and move. Oh, they're coming. Go and wait in the conference room across the hall. Quickly. The harshness of her voice tells me that she won't even try to help if I get caught. <laughs> but the door to the conference room is thankfully unlocked, and I don't see the light on. Unfortunately, I hear movement in the door. I see somebody stand up in the dark. <laughs> Beckett, what are you doing here? Is he also dropping eaves? Maybe, perhaps? <laughs> Who's there? I like to think this is where he lives. Yeah, he lives here under this table. This is my bed. <laughs> this is my bed. I expect the room to be empty, but Beckett Moore is sitting there with a open briefcase full of paperwork. Hmm. He hesitates before walking up. You. 
No, hold on. No, I know I did something you didn't like the last time we met, we talked. But I remember just uh, today that I found something that I think belongs to you. I take the uh, brown folded paper of leather out of my pocket and show it to him. His round pupils turn into more of a slit when he sees it. Now, where'd you happen to pick that up? It was uh, just there in my locker the first day of work. Wouldn't be the first time somebody fucked with somebody new. Show me what's in it. I want to make sure nothing's missing. I open it up and show him. There's a few blank, uh, blank note slips and a company ID with a stamp on it and a couple dollar bills. I turn it upside down and a uh, thicker piece of paper slips out. There's a picture of a big family. Yeah. A family a group of Gilleth. Gillis. One of them has his uh, head torn open, torn out of the image. Uh, he's uh, touched on the shoulder by a much older looking lizard, who also is touching a Gilla who looks slight, like a slightly younger Beckett. Who's that? He glares. A reminder. Looks like everything he here, so thank you for the return. Admittedly, though, I already searched your things for it. What? You think I stole it? Most people steal when they're desperate. I checked a whole bunch more places before your locker, if you want to get weepy over it. Nah. I have to admit that the photo got me curious, though. The lizard lets out a bitter laugh. <laughs> well, it's not really like a secret I keep once folks lay eyes on it. He points out the photo. That's me. My late cousin Amos, and my good-for-nothing spawn from hell who I used to call my twin brother. Is his name Porter, perchance? Perchance. <laughs> uh, his lips thin, and I can see more of his reptilian teeth. So you've met him. He seems dangerous. I'd call him a viper with legs, but I wouldn't want to offend the vipers. <laughs> what do you do? Uh, the lizard's lips pull back into a grimace. I'm glad you asked. See, my brother loves his secrets. But me, I prefer I much prefer airing my grievances to anybody who has the sensibility to listen. How much do you know about genetic diseases? Not much. You ever heard of Huntington's disease? Not really. No. Well, it's a terrible thing. You can be just fine until you're 30, 40, even 50, or 50 years old before you start getting symptoms. What are the symptoms? First, you stop moving. A while after, you don't talk so good. Then, you stop breathing. It's, uh, fatal? Sure as shit, yeah. It's all on account of that part of your brain hollows out slowly over time. What's interesting about the disease is that it's easy to know who might have it, allowing you to have the right paperwork. Five years ago, both my brother and my cousin had a fairly equal running chance for an administrative position in town hall. I'm no pencil pusher, so I had no skin in that race. Never felt comfortable being around holier-than-thou pricks, who pretend they're too good to get their hands dirty. But either way, those two were just as bright as they were ambitious. So, I figure there's not much harm in a little competition between family, right? Wrong. Porter shows up with the paperwork on a Wednesday night showing off our entire family genealogy. Amos's uncle, his father, and his grandfather all had symptoms in their 30s so it was almost certain that he had the disease as well. The truth of this coming out meant he lost all support with the town council and was asked to reconsider even running in the first place. Naturally, Porter got the job. Amos didn't quite, didn't quit chasing his ambitions. He quit taking care of himself altogether. And when he first discovered he really had symptoms, he put a bullet in his head. Christ. 
Me and Porter are twins. We used to be closer than you could possibly imagine. But knowing what he did to my cousin didn't exactly make me feel comfortable around him. I made that very clear. Just know that if it, that if that's what Porter will do to his own flesh and blood, imagine what he'd do to strangers. I don't want to think too much about the details I've given that man. Or the fact that I've been asked to see him again. Thank you for returning my property to me. No, thank you for uh, reacting reasonably. No, I'm just here to kill a little time while a friend of mine finishes an appointment with the boss. Can't imagine it's anything good if you had to speak directly to the boss. <laughs> no, likely not. Well, game of... Eh. Oh. Ooh. What do you think? You decide. Um... I mean, he seems like he's in a pretty amicable mood. Mm, but I don't wanna, uh, yeah, let's ask about let's ask about the time he screamed at me, screamed at us rather. Duh, Mr. Moore. The Gila looks away from his stack of papers again. What now? The last time we had a talk. Look, you you screamed and ran away from me. It was a shitty day. But it still happened. Sure as shit happened, yeah. Sometimes I hallucinate. And naturally, I get worried about those hallucinations, considering my family history and all. Dog. She getting comfy. Trying to get on that couch. <laughs> you having a hard time, Cook? <laughs> She's like, just push all of the blankets off. She's like, get this fucking shit out of the way. <laughs> Is that what you hey. wanted? <laughs> do you not like the bluey pillow being? In... You don't want the bluey pillow in your corner, do you? What does she want? I don't know. She's like rubbing her face. Yeah. Huh, Bilbo. Maybe it's itching. That's fine. There, now she get comfy. Okay. Makes me wonder if I'm just a ticking time bomb, too. Even if the doctor says I'll be fine. What do you see? Just some bullshit that won't ever matter. If it doesn't matter, then uh, could you say what you saw when you looked at me? He pauses for a moment, fiddling with his papers. It wasn't you, but rather, what was right behind you. I thought it was your shadow at first. Or maybe your reflection in a mirror, till I remembered this room doesn't have a goddamn mirror. Your eyes on this other you were too small and too far apart. Then I saw your mouth and teeth get too big for the rest of your body. Your face would shift, expanding sometimes, then shrinking like a gas without a form, but expressive in segmentations like no gas I had ever seen before. I felt an uncanniness so strong I almost got sick. I want to pray to God that what he saw wasn't real, but I have a funny feeling God's still not listening. I see. Wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen. But it was bad. He looks uncomfortable now. I'm sorry, but would you mind going now? I'm just about to speak when I hear a door shut in the front lo in the main lobby. No, I think it's my time to leave anyhow. His attention returns to his suitcase in the low light as I walk out into the lobby. Okay, well, I think mm. we'll we'll end the part there. Okay, we got to see yeah, we got to see, see Mister Beckett. Yeah, we get to see some boys. That was a good that was a good little surprise. Yeah, I liked that. Yeah, I liked that a lot. Always good to see that boy. Oh yeah. So we'll see you around, everyone. <laughs>